Hello, everyone. My name is indeed Zeynep Tufekci, and it was pronounced correctly, for which I'm very grateful. It happens about one out of 100 times or so. And I am originally from Turkey, and I want to talk about these talks. And I want to talk about how ideas take flight in this world, and I want to talk about how to think about things and how to question things and how to use all these ways of information that we have to go deeper. And I want to start by talking about CONI 2012. Now, I can't see you, so if this were a classroom, I'd say, how many of you heard of it? And everybody would raise their hands almost, because almost everybody had heard of it. This had happened two years ago when a video, as you can see, about 100 million views already, many of which were racked up in the first few weeks. It was a video about Joseph Kony, an indicted war criminal who was in Uganda, and it was this very moving, compelling 30-minute video that told the story of good and bad in very stark, moving terms. In fact, many of us you know, watched it, people were moved by it, celebrities tweeted about it. It just went crazy viral. And it seemed like a, such an obvious, simple story. It was told by uh, these people talking about it. In this chart, you can see that tens of millions of people were talking about Joseph Kony and Let's Stop It, and all these resources should go into this problem. This says Jason Russell, who is the person through whom we hear the story, and that's Gavin, and he's telling the story to his son. It's very easy for us to identify. Jason looks like, you know, just regular guy, and his son is very cute. And they obviously, you know, if you're wondering who the good guys are in this movie, it's like a movie, yeah, likely candidates. Who are the bad guys? There you go. And Joseph Kony, in case you missed the point, Hitler is right there. It's the most evil guy ever, probably, was the sense of the video. Now, it's true. Joseph Kony is an indicted war criminal, and it is a problem. There's nothing you know, to belittle the real issue and the real problems in Uganda that came from that civil war and that conflict. So there are very many problems and issues. But the story that was told to us in such a slick, moving, pull at our heartstring way was too simple. It wasn't even fully true. It was too simplified and made into this digestible saccharine for us. In fact, if you went on YouTube and just started looking, if you went on Twitter, if you went on social media, you would find Roosevelt Kogenmeier, who's a Ugandan journalist and blogger. And it's really an amazing world because all she did was she opened her laptop. She used her webcam. There's no slick production values. You know, Stop Coney, the original video, was 30 minutes of great production and great narrative. This is bad lighting. You know, look at the background. I mean, she's just in her office or study. She's just talking. But if you listen to her, and I encourage you, go follow her on Twitter. She's awesome. She tells a complex story of conflict that was caused by resources and lack of resources and marginalization of people and how the Kony story is six, seven years out of date and it's not the problem facing Uganda right now. And while, of course, if that man was caught, it wouldn't really be on top of anybody's list on Uganda to send all their resources to catch this man and the complexities of moving in a you know, post-conflict world and how do you make peace and how do you... I'm stopping there. The point is, it wasn't the simple story that you would have thought if you were one of the 100 million people who watched the video. If you were one of the 600,000 people who watched Rosabelle, then you were digging deeper, and you could go one more step. And that really was a very interesting moment for me, because you see, I grew up in Turkey. I grew up without speaking English. So I didn't have this, which is Turkish Wikipedia. I thought you guys you know, should learn some Turkish. It's a good thing to do, uh, very useful. It actually is a complicated language, it's, but it's nothing like English. But Wikipedia, that's, there you go. You now know a Turkish word. Uh, we didn't have it. And is a professor telling us to use Wikipedia? Well, yes, don't cite it. It's a great place to start. Uh, you can quote me on that. And we've all been there, right? Wikidrift. You start someplace, and then, you know, three hours later, you're reading, why am I reading about slugs and their digestive system? It's great. <laughs> so I love it. But I didn't have it. I did not have Wikipedia, but I had this. That is my 92-year-old grandma. 
she, she like if one 3D printers, you know, finally are invented and they can print grandma, this is probably what they'll print. She's like prototype grandma. <laughs> She's perfect. She had grown up in Turkey under conditions when girls did not go to school. She was 12 when she was pulled from school and was told, that's it, that's enough for you. You're now about to get married. A miracle happened. A teacher intervened and said, there's an exam for scholarship for girls so they can go to the top high school in Turkey. And the teacher secretly, secretly from the family entered her, and my grandmother won. And there was a lot of conflict, but stuff came together, and a miracle happened, and she was allowed to go to Istanbul, to this big new city, and in a boarding school, this elite top boarding school. And that thing she's holding is a trophy they gave her at the 75th anniversary of her graduation. She graduated from high school, then college, probably the first person in her town, let alone her family. And she became a teacher. And because she had grown up wanting to go to school and pulled and just by some miracle managed to go, she appreciated the opportunity books and education gave. So whenever somebody came to the school she worked at, which I also attended as an elementary school student, when somebody came to sell encyclopedias, do you know those things? No. <laughs> those book things? Well, there used to be people who went around selling them door to door. And we had them in Turkey, too. And they all had my name in their phone book, which, of course, wasn't digital then, uh, then by Zeynep Sucker Grandma, which meant if I took them to my grandma, she would buy whatever they were selling. I loved reading, and I loved encyclopedias. So I always, the encyclopedia salesperson would come and say, we heard there's a Zeynep in the school. And I would pipe up, and they would say, take us to your grandma. And my grandma would buy me whatever I could buy. Uh, every single Turkish children's encyclopedia I had. It was awesome. And I would just read them. You know, you guys read books or comic books or other books. I would read them like that. I would say, I'm going to read the piece today. And I would just read the piece. Or some of the encyclopedias were thematic. And I would say, I'm going to read transportation today. I read them cover to cover. I knew what was in every one of them. Remember, Turkish. So it's not an unlimited collection either. And I would end up having questions that I hit limits. They weren't in any of my encyclopedias. I knew I just couldn't get at them. Now, you don't live in that world anymore. You can go deeper and deeper and deeper, and you can look and ask and question, and I don't live in that world anymore. It's just every day I, I pull out my phone, and I'm always, I can look up anything I want. And if there's some public record of it, I'll probably find it. Or I can ask people, experts. I can ask, you know, when I have a question that puzzles me, I can look up someone. I can email them. This is just amazing. And what I want to say is, when you hear a talk like this, there's Bill Gates, you know, a very successful TED talk. When you hear his talk, the thing to probably take away from it is not what he said at his talk, but to look at a world in which what made him successful, how much of it was him, what was the structure, what were the opportunities he had, what were some of the stumbling blocks. He, for example, had many opportunities because his family was well off, so he went to a school, private school, which had computers when even colleges didn't have one, so he became a programmer early. And he was programming and doing things very early on, which gave him the opportunity to be first when you know, software was being commercialized. Complicated story. My point isn't one thing. My point is, look at these talks as a question mark. It's not a world in which where you can just lean back and be one of the people who does something. In software, in gadgets, people, the people who design them have a word, lean forward gadgets and lean back gadgets. Lean back gadgets are the ones that allow you to lean back and not participate much, whereas the lean forward ones are the ones where you're doing stuff and participating. And these talks, while they can be great, if you don't look at them as a question mark, they can seem like lean back talks. They can seem like, oh, great story, because they're simplified. In 12 minutes and 15 minutes, we're going to simplify something. So when you hear something, pull out your phone. Is there an alternative explanation to the extinction? Is there more to the story? What else could the CIA have done? What is the NSA doing? What's the best balance between security and surveillance? What are other questions we can ask? Very good questions. Do not just listen to us, because it's always 
complicated. It's always complicated. Any question worth solving, any problem worth tackling will be complicated by human factors, social factors, political factors, and it's those people who don't just watch the 100 million people who watch the video, but who then go watch Rosa Bell, the 600,000, and some of those people who will then go read, and some of those people will maybe become activists for life, maybe some of them will become policymakers, maybe some of them will become the people who then, oh, run for office, run an organization, who knows? It's not a world in which you can just watch from afar and have these nicely packaged talks do the work for you. If there's a problem you wanna solve, if there's a mark you wanna leave in this world, just don't look at it as a period, look at it as a question mark, always. But don't take my word for it. Dig deep, dig deep, thank you.